Welcome to another week here at Cannabis News, everybody. I'm your host, Joe Clare. September 24th, 2018, presented as always by the Marijuana Times. Check us out at MarijuanaTimes.org. Click the video tab, MarijuanaTimes.org, to find the show, as well as a bunch of great articles, social media links, and more at MarijuanaTimes.org. Today, talking about stories out of Ohio, also a new... U.S. territory, a new a new jurisdiction in the U.S. officially has, or is officially now put into law. The, the governor has signed marijuana legalization, adult use marijuana legalization. We'll talk about that. Also, a buzzkill for lobsters in Maine. All of that coming up. But first, of course, cannabis news is brought to you by Nature Side, nature-side.com. Side is spelled C-I-D-E. Check out their line of organic, all-natural pesticides. If you're a cannabis cultivator in a state where it is legal, you don't want to use banned pesticides. You want to be regulatory compliant. You don't want to use harmful chemicals on your grow. And, of course, to grow safe and poison-free, people will be ingesting this, including many people who use it for medical reasons. To accomplish all of these things, all the things I listed, big, long list I just gave you, nature-side.com, a proud sponsor of Cannabis News. Check them out. Today, this first story by yours truly over at MarijuanaTimes.org, a tale of two CBDs in Ohio. Many of you know this, the confusion surrounding the legality of CBD. Some say it's legal in all 50 states. Uh, others say uh, no, depends on what it's extracted from. Uh, anything extracted from marijuana, according to the DEA, is by definition illegal because it's on Schedule 1 of the Controlled Substances Act. So I wrote, a, I wrote a long story over at MarijuanaTimes.org. It's linked in the description of this video, as are all stories that I talk about. You can go check it out. There's a video embedded there as well that you can watch. But things came, became more confusing in Ohio, specifically when it comes to CBD. In late August, the Ohio Board of Pharmacy put out a clarification uh, in late August regarding CBD products. Quote, HB 523 which is the medical marijuana law passed by the Ohio legislature in 2016 in the wake of the defeat of Issue 3 in 2015. HB 523 includes CBD oil in the definition of marijuana, regardless of whether it is a plant extract or a synthetic product. All marijuana products, including CBD oil, can only be dispensed in a licensed medical marijuana control program dispensary, which are supposed to be coming to Ohio soon, but none as of yet are open. Uh, those marijuana products will have to comply with the rules and regulations of the program. This has caused some retailers who sell CBD because many, many retailers in Ohio and other states sell CBD products, so a plethora of them in many different forms, brands, you name it, you can find it now with, with CBD in it, most likely. The problem is that the Ohio Board of Pharmacy, as is pointed out in the story, they're, um, they're, this is their policy. You know, and, and their policy, and they're, they're putting out this warning, has caused some retailers to pull CBD from their shelves. Other retailers are not. Uh, one is uh, Hemptations in Southwest Ohio. I talk about in the story, one of the sponsors of one of my other podcasts. And I also do a separate podcast with him about hemp and stuff like that on Facebook. Anyway, he's one of the retailers that is not caved to the pressure. He's still selling CBD products. And he's generated a ton of publicity. This this issue has generated a ton of publicity in Cincinnati and Southwest Ohio. And the Cincinnati Inquirer, uh, TV station WCPO and WLWT, and the radio station 700 WLW in Cincinnati have all had him on to talk about this. His name is uh, E.R. Beach. They've had him on to talk about hemp and CBD and why he continues to sell it. And basically, and again, you can check out the story and the video embedded. But the bottom line is that under the 2014 Farm Bill. It was allowed that states could create their own pilot programs for hemp, for research purposes, educational purposes, whatever. So get these pilot programs, and many states are growing hemp now, like 40 states have legalized the growing of hemp. CBD, the people like Beach Cell, are extracted, is extracted from industrial hemp. Now there's controversy apparently about that too, but that's for another show at another time. It's extracted from industrial hemp. Other CBD products are extracted from CBD-rich strains of marijuana, and there's a distinction. The Ohio Board of Pharmacy apparently recognizes that distinction, even though they're saying that all of it is illegal. And so the confusion continues. And like I said, it's generated a lot of publicity in Cincinnati. A lot of people are wondering, you know, is this legal? Can I buy this here? Uh, so check out that story on Marijuana Times. 
Ohio.org. It's, it's an Ohio centric story, but and I know a lot of you live across the country and across the world. But it's an important issue because this is likely to happen and has been happening in many states. CBD being poured off the shelves and then put back. Uh, one agency says, no, this is illegal. Another one says it's not illegal. Uh, one sheriff's office says, yes, we're going to take these from you. Another sheriff's office says, no, it's fine. We're not going to raid these places and take their CBD off their shelves. It's very confusing. The patchwork of laws regarding this across the country is very confusing. So it's a story we'll continue to to cover and talk about, obviously. What happens, you know, I mean, will, will the DEA and Congress reschedule CBD Will there be different distinctions because of Epidiolex, the new FDA-approved uh, CBD spray from GW Pharmaceuticals? What's going to happen with all that? I have no idea. That's why we do this show five days a week, to bring you the latest on what's going on. Speaking of the latest on what's going on, these next two stories are updates on previous stories we've done. First of all, you may remember that the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, CNMI, it's a tiny Pacific territory with a population of about 50,000 people. It's a group of uh, over a dozen islands in the Pacific Ocean near Guam. Their House and their Senate passed adult use legalization. And now Governor Ralph Torres, a Republican and governor of CNMI, uh, signed the new law into, or signed the bill into law, signed the measure into law. Now adults over 21 years of age will be able to legally possess up to one ounce of marijuana, as well as infused products and extracts. Regulators will issue licenses for cannabis producers, testing facilities, processors, retailers, wholesalers, and lounges. Home cultivation of a small small number of plants will also be allowed. Of course, um, CNMI uh, sets a few milestones with this. They're the first jurisdiction in the U.S. to pass adult legalization without having first passed um, medical marijuana legalization. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're also, of course, the first territory to legalize adult use uh, marijuana, and they're also the first jurisdiction in the United States to pass recreational retail marijuana sales legalization through the legislature. Uh, Vermont passed marijuana legalization through the legislature, but there's no commercial retail sales structure in Vermont. So a bunch of, uh, of, of milestones there in the U.S. territory. As I opined... Uh, I think the first time we did this story, maybe uh, maybe a tourist attraction. I don't know. <clears throat> Marijuana Mecca in the middle of the Pacific. You know, people are flying from Japan to Canada, or the U.S. or whatever, or vice versa, or going from, you know, flying from Taiwan to L.A. or Australia to Seattle. They'll make a little stopover, a little weed stopover. And CNMI, weed destination of the world. I don't know. I don't run the tourist bureau for the Northern Mariana Islands. I'm, But if I did, you know, it's... That's some of the things you'd expect to see. <laughs> some of the posters and billboards and postcards. Yes, people still use postcards, right? It's very, it's very outdated technology. This last story is from Civilized.life. Again, an update from a story last week. I told you last week about a restaurant in Maine who thought it may be more humane to get uh, lobsters high on marijuana before... Boiling them alive, of course, PETA says that really the boiling on the live part is the problem and that, uh, you know, anything that's done beforehand is really not going to mitigate the circumstances. Well, in any case, apparently they're not allowed to do this, period. Maine officials say a restaurant owner can't get lobsters high on marijuana. That's right. The state of Maine has weighed in on this story, obviously, because it hit Fox News and various other outlets, the Washington Post. Earlier this week, a restaurant in Maine made headlines for announcing that they would begin getting their lobsters high on marijuana before cooking them. But no, the state of Maine says no, not going to do that. A spokesperson for the uh, Maine Department of Health in a statement said this plan to get lobsters high before cooking them and serve them to customers is in fact illegal. The state said they would, quote, treat food served to consumers uh, at a licensed eating places, at licensed eating places and affected by marijuana, as has been described with this establishment, as adulterated and therefore illegal. So they're saying blowing, basically blowing smoke into a lobster tank adulterates, <laughs> alters somehow the lobster that's going to be served and that this is a problem and that this is not allowed. The spokesperson added that the state's regulators do not currently have any information about the health effects of sedating lobsters with marijuana. And why would they? Because that's not, nobody thought that was a thing until recently. 
The lobster restaurant in question said that through experiments they conduct, the lobsters seem more calm and less agitated when exposed to marijuana smoke than they were when they were sober. To be fair, they did one lobster, and the lobster seemed kind of cool and more sociable uh, for a few weeks after getting high on the marijuana. And as a reward, they let him go instead of, or let the lobster go instead of boiling it alive. And that they're going to try it on lobsters that they serve there, and you need to be able to pick as a, cons- a consumer whether or not you wanted a lobster that it had previously been high on marijuana or been introduced to marijuana before being boiled alive. The state of Maine has put a buzz kill on all of that. Buzz Killington. They uh, they say that they can't, you can't do that. So if you're, you're on your way to that restaurant in Maine in hopes of getting a high lobster for your dinner, no, maybe one day, maybe one day. I mean, I mean, imagine, I mean, as far as cannabis infused lobster, I don't know about how you would do that. I mean, I imagine the butter, obviously can be can of, can of butter and you could use that for, you know, dipping the lobster. And then that would be, you know, introducing cannabis to the, to the meal. And one day that'll be, you know, a meal that people can get in, in establishments probably across the country. But for now you can't even get a lobster that was high before they died, much less can of butter on the side. So in any case, that's a, it's a sad note to end on lobsters. You're, they will, they will go to the pot without pot. That was clever of me. Thank you, everybody, for checking this out. This episode of Cannabis News, we're here five days a week, as I said. Search Vimeo and YouTube for the Marijuana Times to get the videos. Check us out at MarijuanaTimes.org, of course. If you want the audio-only version of the show, go to Apple Podcasts and search the Marijuana Times there. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening and commenting and spreading the truth about cannabis with this show. We'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. (laughs) 